Hiya Ten, welcome to Evolution and Earth History and video number three, Absolute and Relative Ages. In the first two videos, we've really just done some um, revision stuff, I guess, just reviewing what we know about fossils, the different types of fossils and the important conditions for fossilization, and the geological time scale, which takes all of those fossils and puts them into a um, sequence that um, is based on the dominant organisms that were around at particular periods in geological time. What we want to do in this video is explore some of the ways in which rocks are aged and how we try and get a sense of how old certain types of fossils are and why certain types of fossils are deemed to be older than others. And this involves two very important um, concepts known as absolute and relative age. So firstly, if we look at the relative age of the rock, the relative is compared to. So when we're looking at relative ages, then we're comparing them to something. So when we look at the relative age of a particular rock layer and fossils that are contained within it, then we can do that by comparing the position of the rock layer with the rocks above and below it. So if we have a particular layer of rock, then we look at what's above in the layer above and what is below in the layer uh, below. It may be the same rock type with different fossils, it may be a different rock type altogether, uh, it may be an igneous rock for example with no fossils at all. But by making comparisons with the um, column, with the actual column, we get a sense of um, the relative ages of these different types of rocks. And this is based on the law of superposition. And I'll deal with this a little bit later in this video, but in very broad terms, then if we have a sequence of rocks then what we say is the youngest rocks are on the top and the oldest are on the bottom. So wherever our layer occurs, we can get a sense of its age by comparing it with a layer above it, which would be younger, and a layer below it, which would be older. The other thing we can do is we can compare rocks and fossils in one area with those in another area. By looking at the sequences, we get a sense of how, whether rocks are of a similar age and perhaps may have been laid down uh, and the organisms that uh, left the fossils behind may have been living at about the same time in geological history. This is a process known as stratigraphic correlation and it's designed to say if you have uh, a couple of layers of W, X and Y for example and over here uh, in a different site, so this might be site A and this might be site B. And over here you can see a couple of layers and um, they are V and W. And what you notice is that W contains the same rock and the same fossils as W in site A. Therefore, we can correlate these. We can say that they must be of a similar age. They must have been laid down about the same time. And therefore, these two sites are of the same age, relative age. X and Y being below them in the column would be older and V would be younger. And we can do this also to um, put a different sequence of rock layers into an order in terms of their age. And this is one of the activities that you've actually already done in this topic. So just to revisit a couple of those important laws, firstly the law of superposition. And this is the most important concept that we uh, rely on when we're looking at relative um, age. Uh, I haven't talked about the um, principle of uniformity, which basically says that the processes that have been occurring in the past are occurring in the same way and at the same rate as, the, rate as those in the present. And therefore, we sort of have confidence about the fact that if it takes a long time for sediments to settle and to become um, uh, rock, then and we think that takes a long time now, then it's probably taken a long time in the past. And so we, we make those assumptions based on um, consistency of time. But we also look at how um, rocks are laid down. And the assumption is that if um, fossils are found in a particular layer of rock, then the age of that layer and the rocks that and the fossils that are contained within that uh, rock layer are younger than those below it and older than those above it. 
So again, to just um, put that uh, into more simple terms, if this is the layer here, and we've called this A, and it has certain types of fossils in it, let's say uh, they are trilobite fossils, then it is younger than those below it. So anything that is here in region B would be older. These are older rocks. And anything in layer C, these would be younger rocks. Now, does this assumption always hold true? Well, pretty much. Occasionally, uh, rocks may fold and they may sort of fall over each other. And so there's a possibility that rocks that are uh, lower in the column would be younger, but generally speaking, that's fairly rare. And, and so we can be fairly confident with our assumption about the law of superposition. The other one that's important to look at is stratigraphic correlation. So when you start to look at stratigraphic correlation, you can actually bring a couple of things together in order to um, get clarity about what's actually going on here. So let me, um, first of all, say this is, for core A, we have a sample which contains a number of different rock layers, and you can see different rocks are indicated by uh, different hatch patterns. So dots, um, bricks, um, uh, different sort of dashes and so forth, so different size dashes, um, and symbols which indicate these are different types of rocks. Okay, so this might be a sandstone, uh, for example, um, and this one might be a limestone, and so on. We would expect that if they have fossils in them, they'd be more likely to be a sedimentary rock. So say, for example, a shale. Um, if they don't have fossils in them, then they're more likely to be, um, they still can be sedimentary, but they're more likely to be igneous and metamorphic. And we would not expect, because of the heat and or pressure associated with the formation of igneous and metamorphic rocks, that we would find any fossils in them. So. Um, so that's the first thing, is that the core has a number of different layers of rock in it. You can also see um, some different types of fossils located in those layers. And often these are either um, dominant fossil types, uh, sometimes they may even be index fossils. And we talked about index fossils as certain types of organisms that only lived for a very short period of time in the fossil record. And therefore, uh, when you find them, are indicators of that particular period of time. So you can see we have a couple of different types. Now, our um, law of superposition suggests that the rocks, uh, the oldest rock would be um, eight, and the youngest would be one, and we would get younger as we go towards the top of the column. But when we're looking at stratigraphic correlation, what we're doing is we're comparing two different sites. So in this case, we're looking at a rock here with these little dots, so let's say, that this is sandstone, and we have a nice brachiopod fossil here, a brachiopod. And this brachiopod is found in, uh, in, found in a sandstone. In core C, we see a similar fossil, another brach, and it's found in sandstone as well. So the fact that they are the same type of fossil, and they're found in the same type of rock, suggests that these two layers are the same age. Do we have anything that might confirm that? Well, we have another one here. And let's say that we have a, a, a shale here. Same type of rock over here. A different type. It looks like another type of brachiopod a fossil that is found in this, in this layer. Same fossil, same rock. So therefore, we're saying that they are same or similar age. Does that accord with our previous um, conclusion? Well, yes, it does, because um, these, this layer, so 16 and 24, are the same age. They are both lower in the column than our original ones, so 13 and 21. And so therefore, they are older um, because they're further down the column. And uh, if one was younger and one was older, we would have a bit of more of a problem. But because um, they uh, fit, both fit that condition, then we can be confident of that. Notice that there is also some correlation in the rock types in between these two that we've just aged. Now, there's no fossils in them, so we would want fossils for um, a stronger correlation. 
Um, but nonetheless, the fact that the sequence of rocks going from 16 to 13 and from 24 to 21 is not only the same, but two of the fossils that are located are also the same, gives us a reasonable amount of confidence that these are the same age. Now I just want to spend a very small amount of time also talking about absolute age because we do need to start looking at um, some of the processes of radioactive breakdown. The absolute age of any rock and the fossils contained within it are only found through um, radioactive decay or a process known as radiometric dating. And this is based on a, on a concept called half-life or um, a property of different radioisotopes uh, which are unstable forms of elements. So we would know that an isotope is um, a word that we use to describe a different masses of the same element. So where an atom has a different number of neutrons in its nucleus, then we say that there are multiple isotopes of that particular element. As long as they have the same number of protons, if they have different numbers of neutrons, then they are isotopes of one another. And what we can do is we can make comparisons between the relative abundance of the radioisotope and whatever its stable product is. And I'll explain that in the next slide. So two different types of radiometric dating here. One is potassium argon dating. And when potassium um, 40 is a radioactive form of potassium, when it decays, it forms the um, two different types of products, argon or calcium. And the uh, the rate at which it does that is roughly a 11 uh, to 89 percent ratio. And this is because the decay is through beta decay. Uh, so the potassium 40 will uh, release a beta particle, okay, and it will also produce um, argon 40. But what can happen is that the electron can actually be captured and there's um, a few different changes that occur as a consequence of that which can um, create also create the calcium. The important thing about this is firstly that it has a very, very long half-life, um, 250 million years or 1.25 billion years. And so it's, it's most useful for dating rocks in the Mesozoic and the Cenozoic eras. And we do that by comparing the um, relative abundance of the radioisotope, which in this case is potassium, with the stabler um, form that we find. So argon. Argon is good because it's an inert gas, so it doesn't tend to combine. Potassium is a common component of a lot of feldspars. Um, so that's one of the reasons why, which is fairly common mineral, and it's one of the reasons why it's used. For more recent fossils, uh, so certainly not for ones where we're talking about millions of years, we can use carbon dating. Carbon dating is also um, uh, a, a method which involves beta decay, so the release of a, um, an electron. And in this case, this is the radioisotope, and this is the stable particle. And using uh, a mass spectrometer, we can identify the amount of carbon-14 to the amount of um, uh, nitrogen that's present in a sample. And what it effectively means is if we started from carbon-14, nitrogen-14, and we had, uh, say, one kilogram of carbon and zero of nitrogen, then after 5,730 years, half of this would remain. And due to the one-to-one -one ratio, half of this would be present. After another 5,750 years, so now we're talking about um, uh, what, 11,460, then we've only got uh, 250 grams of this and we've got 750 grams of this, okay? So you can see that half of this is going to break down each time and it's going to form the product and so it's going to decrease by half consistently, this one's going to go up. So in the next period of time where we had uh, 91, 17, 190, we would have only one to five grams of our um, carbon-14 left and eight, seven, five grams of nitrogen. And by looking at these ratios, you get a sense of how old the rocks are. But we'll do a specific example of this in class. Thanks for watching.